You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is time. For episode two of the bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the option block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Glad to see so many of you are enjoying all the fun goodness on the old network, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, join us live for pretty much every show we do throughout the week. Plus, you want to get access to a whole bunch of bonus content. You get pro Q&As, did our special. You guys asked for it. We did a special deep dive into SPX, XPS versus SPY, all that goodness did that this week. See, asking you shall receive here on the network. Options oddities every Friday. Great giveaways. I'm looking at a whole mountain of stuff here in the corner of the studio. That's ready to go to you folks. And a whole bunch more. You know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Uh, no live boot camp yesterday. Dan is still traveling. And I actually had a chance to do my first, my first ever live panel in over two years. Uh, ever since the, the madness all began back in, in March of 2020. I haven't been doing a lot of in-person stuff. So it was kind of fun. I got to see the Flowmaster live and in person again. So I can... Confirm that he is indeed alive. He does exist. <laughs> a little bit less hair since the last time I saw him. But other than that, things are all good, as well as a few others. That was fun. I did secretly and surreptitiously record it, you know, with these types of, you know, me. I always, where I roll out, I always roll with a recorder in hand. And so you, sometimes these, these conferences don't like when you record their stuff. But hey, I'm always a forgiveness rather than permission kind of guy. I want our audience to be able to hear this fun stuff too. I'm going to go do it. So we'll have to see how that recording came out. And, see what we can do with it and put it out there for you masses. So if you folks want to hear me and the flow master and a whole bunch of others talk about the insane year that was 2021 from an options perspective, stay tuned. Maybe you'll get a little bit of a glimpse into that. So I wasn't just, I wasn't just goofing around yesterday. I was out doing business. <laughs> of course I did swing by a bacon station as well. If you don't know what that is, check it out on Twitter. We did tweet out a photo of it. The legendary stack bacon station. <laughs> All right, now let's go around the horn. Enough talk of bacon, even though we could probably talk bacon the rest of the show. The Bacon Cast, introducing the Bacon Cast here on the Options Insider Radio Network. While we're taking a hiatus from the Bacon Cast, <laughs> let's see who's joining me. And maybe they want to talk bacon. I don't know. First, let's go out to the land of myths and monsters. And of course, Uncle Mike himself, St. Charles. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, welcome back to the show. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on our newly minted Bacon Cast, sir? You want to be a part of it? I don't know. I mean, it's um, I think I'm good. I'm, I I know that a, a lot of my in my previous life, I weighed 325 pounds, but I was able to do it without bacon. So you're saying you don't like bacon? Is that what, is that what I'm hearing here? 
I know it's probably going to alienate a vast majority of our listeners, but um, I don't dislike it, but uh, I can't say I'm a bacon lover. I don't think I've ever encountered anyone who didn't like bacon. It's like required prerequisite of existence that you like bacon. I mean, wow, interesting. I, I I think of you a little bit differently now. I'm not going to lie, Uncle Mike. You have changed my perception. I can see that. I, I understand <laughs> that uh, the fact I'm not a I'm not a bacon lover. It automa- it automatically made me someone who doesn't like bacon, even though I specifically said I don't dislike it. So I understand it, and I understand that uh, I'm going against a lot of people in society with this. But um, it, it it's not a, a dislike. It's not like oh, bacon's disgusting, but. Um, it just it doesn't quite do for me what uh, other meats do. You just lost us thousands of listeners. We're at the top of the show, sir. That is, they're turning it off in disgust. They're like, you know, this guy's not into bacon. I'm not into him or this show, and they're just unsubscribing right now. So thank you. Thank you for that, Uncle Mike. Does it make a difference? Does it change your mind if I tell you this bacon station had candied and smoked and peppered bacon? Huh? Huh? Does that uh, light your fire a little bit? I would eat it, and I would enjoy it. But once again, I, I, I'm not just I'm, I'm not the lover that the rest of society is just going to leave it at that. All right. Let's go out to the land of the shores of Maine, where when he's not battling clam piracy for supremacy there on the shores of Maine, he might be holding down a bacon station or two. You never know what they're doing over there in the shores of Maine. He is the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi. From optionpit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. And and what are your thoughts on the uh, the much ballyhooed bacon, sir? Are you pro or are you in the Tucson horribly con camp? Um, you know, I, I think Mike is a good guy. He's he's a solid person. This this, this is only the only real character flaw that I could find. <laughs> yes, it is deeply, deeply flawed characteristic to not like. But bacon. other than that, I think he's a fine human being. I'll 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 let the bacon thing slide. But personally, bacon is a high priority item in this house. <laughs> yes, as it is for everywhere else around the world, including that conference yesterday. I guess Uncle Mike never going to be invited to that conference. Instead, let's go right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down what the heck is trading. And, you know, it's another one of those days, listeners, where you can't really prep for the old OB too far ahead of time because the worm likes to turn and it is turning again right now. And we were looking at the show earlier today. It was pretty much a mixed day. We had we had a few lurking in the red, but it was pretty much a little bit of green, a little bit of red. It was a smattering. It was a mixed day. And now, as the show has commenced proper, maybe Uncle Mike's just shameful, shameful characterization, shameful dislike of bacon has turned the market sour, understandably so, because everything is red now. The Dow's off about 0.15%, the S&P off about half a percent, and NASDAQ off over three quarters, actually almost 0.9% now. So things turning to the worst, you know, again, you hear hear your devoted bull hates bacon, you know, it's going to make you question Some of the other things he's been saying all this time out there. So understandably so. Uh, Let's go around the horn now. We have to update everything, of course, because uh, nothing likes to hang out at the spot that it was (laughs) right when we first ran it. We've got, uh, let's see, let's go out to the old VIX land right now. VIX uh, was looking a little bit softer now as we kicked off the show right around 21 and three quarters. That still puts it down from last show, but a whole heck of a lot less, down about one and a quarter points it was down much more than that just a little while ago. So VIX moving out there. VVIX getting a little bit frothier again. It was 107. Now it's up to about 110. That's only down about four points from last week's show. If this sell-off continues, they're probably going to see uh, pretty much unch to Monday's levels pretty soon. Uh, VXX was at about 24 and three quarters when we kicked off. The show's down about half a point. That one getting about half a point back as well. Uh, UVXY, same deal, gaining about half a point right around the start of the show. It was down over one and a half points. It was at about a 12 handle. Queen kicked off the show is at about a 12 and a half. Uh, SVIX, the newest addition to our arsenal here, a.k.a. the inverse shorts uh, VIX product. If you want to hear people's thoughts, the industry's thoughts on whether we need to maybe uh, think a little bit differently about how we allow people to use these and what kind of gating and approval we have for these. We did talk about that on the panel yesterday with the Flowmaster and others. So stay tuned for that recording. Should be kind of fun. So don't tell anybody. Bit of a secret. From me to you listeners out there. Uh, 14 and a quarter for SVIX up about half a point. And coming into, let's see, the start of the show. Let's see, where are we hanging out? In UVIX, which is, of course, 
the old double VIX. It was a 13 and a three quarters. Now it's at a 15 listeners. That puts it down still from the week, but only down about one and a half. It was down nearly three points earlier today. So UVIX getting a little bit of juice back. Makes sense. It's the double long VIX. So where VIX goes, UVIX should go, but twice as hard. <laughs> so let's go around the horn. I was going to start with him, but I'm still kind of processing his newly formed anti-bacon stance. So instead, let's go to the shores of Maine where they battle clam pirates and they eat bacon. Mr. Rock Lobster, tell me you had some bacon today. Just make me feel better. I did. Aha, there we go. Take that, Uncle Mike. Yeah, I, we have uh, bacon is like, a, I'm going to say, a three three to four day uh, a week meal. Ooh, I might have to move to Maine for the, the bacon proximity. Uh, yeah, I eat breakfast and then um, uh, and I, I, like a, I like a cheeseburger every week, uh, a grilled cheeseburger with bacon on it and barbecue sauce and cheese. So there. I got to have one burger a week or I wither and die. Bacon cheese. <laughs> Uncle Mike is crying right now. All this talk of bacon. He can't take it. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I, do you want to do you want a bacon, a main bacon story? Why would I not? Of course. So so uh, my my uh, my brother in law used to slaughter pigs, you know, raise pigs and slaughter them. And they're all hanging from the gantry. You know, they're all dressed and. Uh, you know, ready to go to the, the butcher is going to come by and uh, turn them into bacon and all that kind of stuff. They're hanging there. So his uh, daughter pops in, sees the big, like bleeding, you know, carcasses hanging from the ceiling of the barn. And what do you think she says? She does. She doesn't go shriek and freak out. She's like, Oh, wow. Look at those piggies. They're going to be mighty good in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Four years old. Wow. All right. Hey, they they start them young over there in the shores of Maine. I like it. I'm just letting you know that there you go. There you go. You're saying bacon so comes in. Everyone talks about lobsters in Maine, but no one knows clearly there's a genetic predisposition to bacon in Maine as well. Yes. Swinging pig carcasses <laughs> from barn gantries. So Uncle Mike yes. turned off all of our bacon lovers. You just turned off all the vegans and uh, animal fans in the audience. So we got like five listeners left. Should be fun. Yeah. I, you know, you have to. I mean, I had avocado toast for lunch. I'm trying to keep my, oh. you know, I got, I'm going to Chicago, so I got to lose like 10 pounds. Look at you, the millennial that you are eating avocado toast. Yeah. Yeah. So I, every, you know, I could put on that hat when I need to. Oh, are we talking Vix or pigs? I couldn't remember. We, both. It's, it is the bacon cast now, so you talk whatever it you is. want. Um, so uh, Vix, well, you know, we have we have an uptick. Um, and I was just, uh, I just actually bought some call spreads in Vix. Uh, I was filled right before the show with uh, one of the guys at Option Pit, Bill Griffo. He's kind of our macro dude. He's really, really good. <laughs> um. um and uh, he was a Bear Stearns bond trader way back in the day. Um, anyway, he's not liking the tea leaves with the rates and all this kind of stuff. So we bought some VIX call spreads today. And what I would say is, once again, we're at a, we, we got down to the 19 handle and we bounced like a rubber ball, just like we have for the last, all of 2022, by the way. Take a look at a chart of VIX, and I'm not like a – when it comes to vol, I'm not a technical analyst by any stretch. But, you know, take a look, and, like, it just can't break that 20 handle for very long. Um, and I, I, it's just a – it's a symptom of the, you know, the realized vol we have in the market. So we are up almost 1% this morning in, in SPX, and now we're down about the three-quarters of a percent. You know, and there's your – there's your twenty, your twenty-two percent or twenty-four percent vol range for the day. So, the symptom of this market is, it's kind of like the weather in Maine. Hey, you don't like it? Just wait a couple hours. It'll change. So, um, and uh, as far as VIX goes, we yesterday I saw a lot of signals of very bottom-esque action. We had the lowest VIX we've had in. Um, three months yesterday. Uh, I also was marking um, skew, downside skew, like lowest in months. Uh, all of my indicators at the bottom of the standard deviation range, uh, bottom of the range of the standard deviation, so the very, very low skew. Um, so all of that stuff was kind of like, and uh, the at-the-money vol has all risen a little bit in re uh, 
Um, so the market's basically saying, hey, we're going to we're going to orbit around. We're going to go up. We're going to go down. We're not really going to stretch in one direction. That is what the current vol is saying. So you don't like the weather of the market. It'll probably be different tomorrow. You know, up one percent, down one percent, whatever, um, and trade accordingly. And that's uh, that is the vol statistics I see um, today from the rudimentary uh, main rock lobster vol indicator, uh, the edge hunter tools that we have. So um, they're actually pretty good. They just uh, they read uh, read the vols and stuff in the ways we want to see them. And today is, you know, this is actually the first white candle for vol in one, two, three, four, five, six days. So definitely, uh, definitely an update for volatility. And, it, you know, again, I would be surprised what the European close. Let's see what happens if the sell off really holds. Um, because they haven't. Um, and I, th I would say another thing that's surprising is the weakness in commodity stocks, like all the metal stocks and stuff, really get smoked. So I would say those are all, um, let's just call them interesting, interesting indicators uh, for what we got going on. So um, I, I'm, I'm looking at what we have also. Uh, let me ask what do we have here. And I want to see this live. Yeah. And again, we the curve still moves and like this heavy contango. Um, so in uh, the May futures back up to 24. So there's a lot of room if you're a vol seller to to kind of get back in and uh, put a position on. But uh, at this point, um, I just I think we have that symptom of the market and it's not really going away. Um, and as I'm watching right now, like SPX just ticked up three quarter, you know, like a quarter of a point, like in a second, a quarter of a percent. So, you know, like I said, it, we're, I think we get I think we have low liquidity. We don't necessarily have like we're going to crash like everybody thinks. At least that's not what the ball saying. But we are going to do a lot of swinging around the at the money. So that's kind of what it at least what the pricing says. And <clears throat> that is my report for the day. We need to find some way to combine VIX with some sort of bacon and make the best indicator on the planet, sir. Who wouldn't follow a VIX and bacon indicator, I ask you? It would be all over. You know, the fear index, you think that's sexy? What about the sizzling? The sizzling index. VIX and bacon, huh? You down for that, Mr. Rocklops? I think we should talk after the show. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, I, I, that's a good indicator. Sizzling. I like it. So you can go sizzler. I'm sure maybe that restaurant train, if it's still around, they may have some uh, trademark disputes with that. But we can settle all that with the lawyers. The sizzler. What do you think, listeners? The Sizzlin' Index. <laughs> Uncle Mike is just is just cringing over there. By the way, our chat looks like they're excited about all this bacon talk. They say they could talk bacon for ages as well. I knew our chat was a bunch of like-minded people. Who doesn't like bacon? Oh, yeah, right. This guy, Uncle Mike. <laughs> Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. You can uncover your ears now. We, we've, we paused the bacon talk just for you. So uh, what are you looking at in the market if you can be so inclined, sir? <laughs> well, you know, I've always had a dream of going out in DeKalb, Illinois. They have Corn Fest, and I've always had a dream of just being that guy that goes out there with a T-shirt that says, I hate corn. And so I'm kind of doing that right now, even though I really don't hate bacon, like I've been falsely accused of. Um, but uh, I, I kind of feel that way. I, I think that you're you're doing mean things to me by putting me in this position. I mean, what if I were Jewish? How would you feel then? Well, then it's different. You can still like it, but you have a religious prescription against it. That, that's a different thing, right? So a lot of Jews like the idea of bacon. They just don't eat it. But you seem like you don't even like the idea of it, sir. Oh, I like the idea of it. No doubt about it. Anyway, what we should do then is for for your TWIFO show, you should analyze, in honor of bacon, you should analyze volatility on options for lean hogs. What do you think of doing that? We do talk about lean hogs every now and then. Actually, I do. But I, don't, I don't think I have the movers and shakers in front of me, but we do have Twifo coming up a little bit later today. I could pull it up. I thought I did see lean hogs. Now that you say that, sir. Yes, lean hogs, number two, spoiler, to the upside this week on the movers and shakers. So bacon may be, making a, may be making a repeat appearance on Twifo later today. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, sir. <laughs> Happy to do it. So for all of you folks that want to talk some more bacon, tune into Twifo. That's how you do it. But anyway, in the markets today, I agree with Andrew in that it's all over the place in that uh, when the S&P has this, when the SPX has a move as quickly as it does from uh, where it goes up uh, roughly 15 points in like a, a minute or so, 
Uh, and that's just seems to be par for the course lately in the markets in general. And so we're above a 20 VIX for a reason, or we're around the 20 VIX for a reason. This is definitely not like the days of 2016, 17, and 18, and to some extent 19, where the VIX is like 10 and watching the, the market during the day is like watching paint dry. Um, it's not like that anymore, and that uh, it kind of moves all over the place. And so uh, we have that uh, going for us. So the same was held true in the bond market. We had a big rally in the 10-year the note yesterday. It's selling off today. So uh, we're having a lot of that happening today. Also, the fact that we have uh, my beloved silver is down 2.5% on the day today. So we do have selling in commodities. We have selling in commodities. We have selling in <clears throat> stocks. We have selling in bonds. So where on earth is all this money going to? Well, usually when we have everything going in one direction, as we are right now, the money typically appears somewhere. Now, where it's going to appear next, uh, it's uh, the the big mystery that will plague all of us as traders uh, to try and find out where that goes. So I think we're in a stage today to where there's just selling and everything. And at some stage, in some way, uh, markets are, the money is going to appear somewhere. And then the big guess on where it's going to appear is which asset class it could be. Uh, we've had a big week so far this week in that looking back two days on Tuesday, we had uh, uh, roughly a 70 point up upside on Tuesday in the marketplace. Uh, and that's quite honestly what's moved the, moved the S&P most of the, this week was the Tuesday rally. Uh, but the point is, is that we're having a pretty good week. And then when you have 70 point up days, you might have a pullback. You might have a, a 20 point pullback, uh, kind of like what we're having today at this stage. Uh, what's interesting about how things are working is that if you look at the uh, the highs of the S&P, the high of the day today was 45.12. And right now we're at 44.36. And so we were as low as 44.27. So when you have that, you have roughly an 85-point range in the S&P. That's about a 2% range that we've had today, peak to trough. So we're getting a lot of movement happening. And combine the fact that we have Biden speaking, talking about escalating uh, the support to the Ukraine. Uh, we have earnings going on. Uh, we still, although COVID doesn't seem to be a big thing in the news, with the exception of the mask mandate being overturned, and now the White House is fighting that, we have COVID. We have a lot of newsworthy events at this stage of the market. So I think the fact that we're moving this much, whether you're bullish or bearish, it's really justified given all of the events that are happening right now on planet Earth. And that is where I'm at with this market. That is where you're at, indeed. One last fact uh, on the bacon front before I keep on rolling here. It just occurred to me, I was talking to the, the organizer of this conference. They had your, your traditional offerings for food. They had like a prime rib carving station and all that stuff. And then, of course, they had nearby, for fun, they had the bacon station. And they were complaining to me how expensive the bacon station was. Like They were being charged like $5 a piece for bacon. So it was actually far more expensive to have the bacon station than to have the prime rib carving station. So there you go. A little bit of insight perhaps into uh, Chicago union pricing here for putting such things out, but fun stuff. There we go. All right. I digress. The chat's still talking about bacon. We got everybody fired up about bacon. Don't worry. <laughs> Lean hogs coming up in a little bit on TWIFO listeners as we keep on rolling. Let's get out to the major indices first. See what's lighting things up out there. VIX, as you would expect with a little bit of a turn to the dark side, in the market, a little bit of a pop in vol. VIX putting some numbers up right now. 324,000 contracts on the tape. That ADB has eroded pretty substantially. It's back below 500K. It's down to 455. After today, it seems like it's probably going to pop up a little bit. We're probably going to exceed that today. Spy at 3.5 million. That ADB has come in as well. It's down to 5.6 million. This obviously going to hit that probably today. The S, 709,000. The S, kind of the quiet spot there which is interesting. By the way, interesting point brought up on our panel yesterday about the S. They were talking about right before, during the height of the beginning of the pandemic back in March when everything went electronic for the first time, including the SPX. Uh, that expiration, people forget, they had the highest amount of open interest ever in the S right as they were going fully electronic for the first time. So it was a bit of a, a dicey prospect there. Uh, intriguing stuff. Again, kind of some one of the fun insights from our panel yesterday. The S, 709,000 contracts, the ADB, 1.63 million. So S has a bit of a ways to go. Uh, the IWM, so uh, small caps, 300,000 contracts on the tape. 
That ADB has come down as well to 650. Remains to be seen if they could break that today. We'll learn more about small caps in a little bit. On uh, Trifo, got Carly Garner joining me. She's a fun guest. Always has something fun to talk about. It's not gas upside. It's beans, something else. She's got some crazy spreads going on or some crazy ladders or some other stuff she's got on. So always fun to talk with her. We'll do that in about exactly an hour here. But uh, and let's go out to the most actives now. Number 10, we've got out to the airlines. American, you know, in spite of pandemic, in spite of all this mask brouhaha, in spite of exploding gas prices, American seeing a surge in demand, posting some good numbers, taking all of the airlines with it, including United Airlines. They are number 10 today, 233,000. So a little bit more active day than we saw on Monday. We were down in the one-something range. 233, that's a decently active day, all things considered. United up 11 and a quarter percent right now to 51 and three quarters. So nice pop here for United. Number nine is Twitter. You don't need me to tell you what's driving the drama in Twitter. <laughs> Mr. Musk says he has his funding secured now. Didn't he say that before, too, with the whole 420 thing? So I don't know. I take what he says with a bit of a grain of salt. Sounds like a lot of the Twitter employees and others are not exactly jazzed about a Musk coming in. But either way, it's driving some paper out there again. Good for Twitter only up about half a buck right now or 1.1%. But it's actually actually the high for the day. So Twitter kind of bucking the sell offs going on in the rest of the market. A number nine here, 326,000. So we're jumping up quite a bit from 10 to nine. That's kind of interesting. Number eight, back to Snap. You know, like I said, we joked about it last cycle. Who the hell still uses Snap? But uh, apparently some people still do because they posted some surprise earnings last time. And they're moving a bit again today off 3% or about a buck, trading right around 29.81. Uh, they have earnings. Itself, I think I'll look in a little bit in the earnings report to see if they're popping off after the bell or before. I think they're after the bell. Yeah, they're after the bell. So they're, this is just pre-earnings flow. Good for 327,000 contracts, though. Number seven, the aforementioned American Airlines, the rising tide that is lifting all boats at 2040. American actually not, not blowing the doors off, perhaps, uh, the way you thought. It's still up 4.7%. Don't get me wrong. Decent day, 90-odd cents. But it is giving up some of its upside that it had earlier in today, right around twenty dollars and forty cents right now. Got as high, it looks like, as about twenty-one and a quarter out there. So it's because that's a nice pop from where it was, nineteen and a half bucks going into their announcement, but still uh trending lower again, which has kind of been the uh, interesting thing to watch. We were joking not that long ago, the paper, some of the paper we saw in American and people expecting American go to zero. Some of this crazy put paper we saw out there. Today, it's good for three hundred and sixty two thousand contracts and number seven. Number six, AMD three sixty three. We won't bother. With that one, it always hangs out in the top 10 these days. Number five, we've got Facebook. Now we're jumping up a bit again to 489,000. Facebook back in the 100 handle, 190 to be precise, off exactly $10 or 5% today. So a bit of a drubbing out there for the old FB. So people maybe getting a little bit concerned about them, the meta pivots out there. Either way, Facebook taking a bit of a drubbing out there. Good for number five, 489,000. Number four, it's the flicks. You know what's going on out there. Man, Netflix taking it on the chin out there yesterday, and that's continuing today. Let's see. Look at how far we We were at three, almost 350 before the sell-off on Tuesday. It's at 217.94 right now. Oh, my goodness. Off 38% or 134 handles in the past five days, and most of that in the last couple of days, obviously. So, wow. Yeah, that's, you know, we all knew this day was probably coming. Didn't know it was going to come all at once, but uh, the subscriber growth that they had during the pandemic, uh, they kind of hit max subscriber. And that, of course, has been weighing on other big uh, subscription content ventures like Disney and others. In fact, Brian had an interesting OPR play yesterday ahead of Disney earnings. Check it out if you haven't. It's kind of interesting. I think he had a calendar out there. So uh, interesting stuff out here. Netflix right around 217 and a half. Uh, taking a bit of a drubbing again today off about eight and a quarter, 3.65%. What are you guys up to in Netflix? Have you guys been uh, trading it up out there in light of all this madness? Hit us up, let us know. Number three, NVIDIA, 625,000. Number two, as I said, number two, it's Apple, 1.07 million. You know what the big dog is today, listeners. It's Tesla. Tesla actually blowing the doors off despite uh, all their supply issues, just crushing numbers. Good for 1.33 million contracts today. Tesla back over 1,000 again, 1036, up 59, 58 bucks or so, up about 6% on the day. So nice little pop here for, for Tesla in spite of the rest of the NASDAQ. 
getting hammered. Let's see. Speaking of getting hammered, let's look really quickly out to earnings. We have the newest earnings move, earnings move results, and season reports hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orat. So you had some big names popping off this week. Let's go to some of them really quick. We have uh, the latest earnings move results report for today. United Airlines before yesterday after the bell, I should say. They're 46 and a half bucks is where they were trading. They're pricing in five bucks. It's five percent. They delivered 12.3 percent listeners. So crazy town. Again, we talked about all that vol going on out there in United Airlines. Kind of a one two punch of United Airlines earnings and then American Airlines. Americans before the bell today, they were at 19 and a half bucks when they announced they were pricing in 5.5 percent. They actually delivered 5.7 percent, which is kind of interesting. So a United outperforming American, not so much. AT&T, now kind of just back to the phone business. Uh, people are actually saying that was a good time to spin off that content business because look what happened to Netflix. They avoided that. AT&T, 1943, going into their announcement. They are pricing in 2.8%. They delivered 3.2%, up to about 20 bucks and change. Tesla, again, big banger going into their announcement. 977 is where they were trading. They are pricing in 6.8%. They delivered 8%. Out there, let's see if we got a few others here for you. Uh, we've got, yeah, a bunch of others coming in here on the earnings move results reports here. Let's go out to, oh, there's so many listeners <laughs> kind of coming up against it. Uh, check these out for yourselves over there on the website. All your favorites, D-H-R-A-L-K, N-E-P, P-N-R, D-Q, D-G-X, and legions of others. A lot of names popping off recently here. Well, we're kind of coming up against it here, listeners. Uh, the odd block is awaiting us. We do have Snap. Oh, really quick. It's Snap after the bell today. They are pricing. They were at thirty dollars and three quarters. I should say they're pricing in three point eight percent in the uh, three point eight dollars. Actually, these are in dollars. The movies. And then packs in the past they've moved six and a quarter. Of course, that's kind of maybe biased by last quarter's announcement. So maybe if you factor that out, might be a little bit different. But uh, Snap. Looking comparatively light, but I think that number is a little bit biased. Activision Blizzard, what's going on with them now, this whole antitrust and everything? They're at about 79 bucks. They're pricing one and a half dollars. In the past, they've moved three and a quarter. But again, post MA like that, post corporate event, you kind of expect less juice usually. Uh, Verizon, 22nd before the bell, 54.41 is where they were trading. They're pricing in a buck 07. In the past, they've moved 58 cents. Uh, so far on the season now, with 49 names reporting this week. We are back into the red with a whopping 59% of the return. So 100% is break even on all the straddles. 59% means you got close to half of the amount of movement that was being priced in. So not a good start for the season. Looks like we got some new earnings trades to report here in SAM and SAP. Those are both short straddle trades. You can check those out for yourselves on the earnings trades report. They are still monitoring 43 long straddles, 21 short straddles, and 53 calendars over there. So check it out, theoptionsider.com. We got to get going. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the Odd Block. everybody welcome to the odd block a portion of the show where we talk about nothing but bacon and if we have time also some unusual options activity let us unleash the eye of sauron see what it finds looks like we're going out to some interesting ones today first we're going out to everyone's favorite bhp group limited ticker symbol bhp i do believe this is a newcomer to the odd block today looks like they do copper mining out of australia but so yeah ticker symbol bhp 71 and three quarters is where they're trading right now down over five bucks or six and three quarters percent just today. Let's see, on the year, a year ago, they were trading pretty close to where they are right now, 73.94. They hit their high for the year on, looks like May 10th, right around 82 bucks. And then they kind of hovered there for a while until August. And then they took it on the chin. They fell on August 13th from 77.82 to 62.84. And then they kind of hung out there for a little bit, took another drubbing down to 52.62 on September 29th. Hung out there for a while. Their low came in November, 51.88. Ever since then, they've been on a rally again, as we've seen kind of some of these 
these commodity prices take a nice upswing. This has lifted them back up to almost, you know, 7930, almost up to their high for the year. So they went from the low for the year back up to the high for the year from November to uh, April here. Now kind of selling off again right now. Commodities taking a bit of a hit right now, at least copper. Uh, so intriguing stuff here for BHP. What did our eye of Sauron find out here, I should say? It was AUG double puts, 55 puts. I said we're trading at a 71 and three quarters right now. Someone had to have these AUG double puts, Mr. Rock Lobster, to the tune of 20,367 going up through the offer. They were offered at a buck 10. They said, I'll take these. I'll take them for a buck 20, 20,000 times. Uh, that stock was at 73 and a quarter, so it has sold off a buck and a half since then. So that probably was the smarter play. They came in and have done more since, a total of 31,000 of these. So Mr. Rock Lobster, looks like someone is really concerned about some near-term downside in copper through the lens of BHP. And so far today, it seems like they're on the right tip, sir. Yeah, I, I was funny. I was going to ask Tusa about that because I know he follows silver and all the rest. But, like, I am surprised. And I, I think like all of a sudden the narrative, everybody's just getting out of the commodities like, OK, this is the top of the commodity boom. This is it. I think, uh, you know, there was just dollars crowded into uh, commodity stocks. And, you know, this could be, uh, you know, a hedge, something like that. Um, but um, clearly some worries in this neck of the woods for commodity prices. So, um but it, it feels like maybe the trade everybody kind of kind of piled in here with the Russians and the commodity the feared commodity squeeze has not materialized as much as everybody thought and at least short term and I think everybody's just like there's just piles getting out it just feels like they're selling is pretty relentless like uh, Freeport McMoran reported today and you know the earnings were good but. You know, I guess what do they complain? Supply chain or this or whatever problems, and they're just getting smashed. So, it's is it a buying opportunity? I don't know, um, but I know all the prices are much lower than where they were last week. Um, anyway, so I think this is just a put buyer just coming in saying, "Hey, you know what? I think we're going lower, and I'm going to buy some puts and see what happens." Well, since you mentioned Freeport MacMorris, go to them next. Or I have Sauron also glanced at them. So a lot of commodity driven. Names lighting up our eye of Sauron today, listeners. A ticker symbol FCX, of course. We talked about them before, so we'll just do a quick rundown for the year. The high for the year is about 52 bucks. The low was $30, pretty much even. And the low came, was actually the low came in September for them. And the high was not too long ago, as you might imagine. Looks like it was right on March 25th. So intriguing stuff. So a little bit different chart here than what we just talked about out there with BHP but today looks like and they have looks like they had earnings actually today FCX so uh, intriguing we are in the post earnings blush slash madness that usually goes on in these and someone came in looks like today and scooped 11,290 of the July 36 puts I, I said we're trading 45 and a quarter right now listeners so these also pretty substantially out of the money puts and once again, they paid. Uh, they, they just paid the offer. These were actually much tighter. These were ninety-two cents at ninety-four, so not quite as wide of a market as we saw out there in BHP. But again, maybe a little bit more paper going up in earnings day on uh, on FCX out there. The stock when they did this was forty-six twenty, so pretty much exactly a buck higher. And the stock the vol was about fifty-three, almost fifty-four. So they paid the offer on puts. These are also pretty sizable out of the money puts. They were about well, the stock went up. They were over ten dollars out of the money puts, about nine bucks now, and the stock has moved the buck in their favor, Mister Rock Lobster. So I'm guessing you like these puts as well, sir. Seems like the same trade. Maybe it's the same player. I'll have to look and see what time they went up. But someone liking downside in both of these today, Mister. Yeah, they're about this ten minutes apart. These trades, sir. Uh, yeah, I think it's I guess same. It's the same uh, same mo. Um, buying some puts, all of a sudden they're just jumping out of the commodities and. My my surprise though is why do you buy the July thirty six puts for ninety four cents? I mean they're they're looking for pretty much a total annihilation. You know, looking for a wipeout, yeah. So I I find it um, uh, interesting to say the least. But you know who who's to say how uh, how long these you know the sell off goes? Maybe it's a pretty good markdown all the way back to you know uh, you know where we started basically. I mean. If you look at if I'm if I'm looking at a chart right now and I'm looking at um, FCX, 
And, you know, what basically, you know, where were we? When did the Russians invade? March 1st, right? So you got the March 1st. The February 24th. That was the big day. Feb 24th. Yeah. Okay. So that, so those are the two huge candles. And that was $42, right? So basically, I mean, the whole the whole Russian invasion thing is out of the pricing of commodities right now. Um, so you know there might have been a little when they were starting to I guess pound up onto the border. Uh, there was a little bit of a press there, and that was like so. Freeport was thirty nine bucks um, at that point. So I mean I I could see why they're buying those longer term puts post earnings. The mall's cheaper. But I mean, as of right now, I'm starting to see like, I'm starting to see lower numbers on some of the commodity stocks since, um, um, since the, uh, you know, since their last earnings cycle, which was pretty good. So definitely kind of like, you know, these prices are getting very, very low down here, I would say. But, you know, what the heck do I know? But as of right now, you got, I'm looking at candles, like one, two, like, you know, you got some of these stocks have, you know, out of the last 10 days, you have only one update in 10 days. So pretty ugly, pretty ugly and hard sell off in the commodity stocks. Well, we shall see because we have one more in store for us. It's a very commodity focused uh, odd block today, listeners. Uh, our third one is, I do believe this is a newcomer to the odd. We talked about others in the past in the NAT gas space. I'm not sure if we talked about Equitrans Midstream Corp. Ticker symbol ETRN, uh, trading right now eight dollars and forty six cents, bucking the trend. The Rock Lobsters was talking about up about sixty cents, or actually, let's see, up about sixty cents on the year, but actually off a little bit today. Uh, on the year, like I said, they've had obviously a nice run. A year ago, it was trading seven eighty three, got up to a high not too long ago. Actually, this was before the invasion, January fourteenth. Interesting. So they didn't peak around February twenty fourth. January fourteenth, they hit their high of eleven and a half bucks. And actually, on the invasion day, it was almost their low. February 24th actually was their low, 587. So kind of interesting for a, a nat gas supplier. And since then, they've been on the rampage again, uh, back up to where they are right now, about eight and a half bucks. So an intriguing chart here for Equitrans. Tellurian is the one we were talking about on Options Oddities not too long ago. But it seems like someone, Mr. Rock Lobster, is, uh, well, at first, it's thought we thought, hey, someone's bucking this trend. They're scooping this because they came in and scooped. It looked like they scooped 4,624 of the May 9 calls for 25 cents. They were 20 at 25 cents. You said, oh, it looks like they maybe bought these. Let's, let's have the eye of Sauron go back and look a little more just to make sure. The stock was 862 and these went up, so a little bit higher. And then it turns out it looks like they were actually selling these because we found many more prints, 2,207 a little bit earlier for 25 cents as well. But the bid was 25 cents. Then 25 at 35, they crushed that bid for 25 cents. 1,168 more. They were 25 at 30. Um, about a minute later, they hit that bid again for uh, 25 cents. Another 1,000. They actually got them off for earlier in the day for 27 cents. Someone regrets those. Obviously, another 900 for 25.2 cents. So you get the story here. A total of about 11,000 of these going up for 25 cents, which is why it's always important, listeners, to see one big print. Do a little bit more diligence, because if you just looked at that one print, you say, ha, ah, someone scooped up all these calls, but they crushed the bid <laughs> until it finally went away, and they were 20 at 25, and they got filled on the last about 5,000 on these. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, it seems like someone is taking your narrative to heart here that commodities have topped out, because they are overwriting the hell out of these May 9 calls for 25 cents in Equitrans. What say you, sir? Uh, writing, writing, writing. Writing the Equitrans Midstream Corp. Oh my word! So is this a uh, this is an oil like an oil midstream company? Yes, a natural gas gatherer. So they're saying, hey, this is it. We are at peak prices, and and they're taking their corp again. It's still a pretty good yield, twenty five cents on a nine dollar stock. That's not bad for uh, for uh, what what a one month hold. So it's still pretty good. I mean, uh, yield wise, it's better. It's like three percent. Um, and they're uh, quite happy probably with where, what level they're getting here because they're getting a, you know, they're getting a, you know, uh, you know, like, what is that? A, from the bottom in, uh, the beginning of March, I think they're taking their money and running. So, uh, it would not surprise me to see more of that type of action of that call writing action. And it would not surprise me to see some awesome queries from you folks. Let's get to a little bit of the old mail block. 
It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. Let's look in the chat here really quickly. They're talking about bacon still. Uh, also, looks like uh, our buddy, Mr. Unlimited, he's been trying to sell those Oatly puts forever. I think the four puts for 50 cents or the four half puts 50 cents somewhere on those lines. Yeah, he's filled now, Mr. Rock Lobster. Oatly. Yeah, take- Oatly's going to zero. Oatly taking on the chin again, 391 right now. So, yeah, taking quite the quite the drubbing out there. Also says he's like, peaking and taking the drubbing. He says those VRM puts he was looking at. It was like VRM. Those puts may have been fairly priced. That stock at like 176 right now. So. <laughs> A bit of an ouchie. That was the one. Remember, my spidey sense was like, I, maybe I want to work these a little bit above the offer. And unfortunately, that that uh, did come to pass out there. So sometimes those puts, as we discovered with EDU, sometimes those puts, as outlandish as they may be, are actually fairly priced. Speaking of fairly pricing things, how are you folks pricing this Ukraine madness we were talking about pretty much all show long when we weren't talking about bacon? We asked you again this week after our last poll two months ago, you folks were maybe a little bit short time focused, maybe a little bit more so than was warranted. We said, hey, we'll try it again. We'll say this time, we ask you again, how long will the war in Ukraine continue to impact the markets? Gave you four choices between one and three months, between three and six months, between six months and a year, and over a year. Let's go out to Uncle Mike. First, Uncle Mike, do you have any thoughts on all that commodity madness we just talked about in the odd block and your beloved silver? If you have any thoughts on that, maybe as the rock lobster seems to think, maybe the bloom is off the rose. What are your thoughts on that? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for in our newest Ukraine poll, sir? Well, in terms of the commodities and the bloom being off the rose, um, where I'm looking at is it's still pretty darn, a lot of commodities are still pretty darn high. I mean, we have oil still above 100. Uh, silver is still up in a pretty good amount recently. It, has it pulled back? Yeah, no question. But I'm not convinced the bloom is off the rose as of yet. Um I do think that the initial fear of Russia going into the Ukraine, no question that's factored in. But uh, is the bloom off the rose? I'm not sure as of yet. But uh, if I'm wrong and the bloom is off the road, rose, that's why you hedge with put options. Uh, in terms of the Russia-Ukraine standoff and where it's at, I still am an optimistic person. I think we could see some type of resolution by the end of the year. Um, because the, Russia doesn't seem to want to go away and Ukraine might appease them in some way, shape or form. I mean, obviously it's, uh, not what anyone wants, well, not what anyone except Russia wants, but I could see something like that happening, uh, because I, I really don't see American troops going in. Uh, is it possible? Yeah. But I think at some stage they're going to, Russia's going to realize, um, we got a little bit of what we wanted. We didn't quite get all of what we wanted. And Ukraine's like, oh, we've had enough. And I think they're going to come to some type of settlement in some way, shape, or form. And um, whatever they come up with, I really hope the fighting ends soon because it's not a pretty thing. So you're voting one to three months, three to six months. Where are you voting? Three one. to six. Okay. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. Where are you voting in our poll? And what do you think our audience is voting for? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think the Russians ever leave, to be honest. Um, they're settling in. So. Um, Will we get to some kind of detente? I would say probably within a year. So what do you have, nine months to a year, something like that? We have six months to a year, yeah. Yeah, I would do six months to a year, and I think that's where the audience is. Well, our audience definitely more long-term than they were last time, I will say that. Right now, oh, it's still ticking as I speak here. Let me update it here. Okay, uh, so over a year is still winning our poll. So our audience, not surprisingly, maybe a little bit just sour on the whole situation over there. 44.4% saying it's going to last over a year. 26.7% saying between three to six months. Uh, we all know it's probably going to go beyond May 9th, right? That's the big day, that uh, the victory day that Russia celebrates for World War II. So they know that it's going to go last longer than that. But uh, then we have 17.8% for between six months and a year, and only 11.1% saying between one and three months. I hope you folks are right. But again, the, the cynic in me, I was longer term last time. I'm still pretty long term. I would hope that this is... Between six months and a year, we could see some sort of resolution. I, I do fear, though, that the nearly half of you who are saying over a year are unfortunately on the right track here. A couple other flash polls we did. Well, I will say that one for Ball Views. Uh, that was, we did that during Ball Views. Last week, our question of the week 
We asked you which of the products, new products you're most excited about, SVIX, UVIX, the micro Bitcoin or ETH options, or the Nanos on SPX. The Nanos had a huge resurgence right at the end there. I'm guessing maybe someone from SIBO saw the poll. 31.4% uh, taking it for the Nanos, 25.7% for the CME micro products, 22.9% for UVIX, only 20%. So SVIX actually lost the poll, came in fourth. That surprised me. Uh, so that was kind of interesting in and of itself. Uh, let's go out to this one really quickly here from AJK. Mr. Uncle Mike, perfect one for you. He wants to know, what is the cutoff point where you say that a put is simply too expensive to buy? Is it a certain percentage of the underlying price, a volatility level, something else? And what do you do at that point? Just not buy it? Do you sell it or do you buy a put spread instead? Mr. Uncle Mike, what say you, sir? What is your cutoff point where a put is too expensive? It's hard to say. It would just be dependent upon, I mean, a lot of times if uh, I am buying a put option to as a protective put, uh, I'm looking at it by, I, I'm either going to just buy it because I don't feel it's expensive or I'm going to finance it if I do feel it is expensive. So I don't know if I would ever get to the point to where it's just too expensive, I wouldn't buy it. But what I would do is I would buy a put spread instead. And in terms of at what point would it be? I would say where I don't feel the movement can justify the price. So for example, if I'm really bearish on, for people that were really bearish on Netflix the other day, uh, and were thinking that the puts were a little expensive, well, uh, some of them did pretty well depending on where they bought them, even though they were pretty expensive. So I think it's just in relation to the expected move that I would have uh, on the underlying stock. And if I do feel it's too expensive, then I just buy a put spread. All right, listeners, and with that, it's time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, let's go around the block. Let's start with the rockingest of lobsters. Mr. Lobster, while you're probably going to have some bacon after this show, maybe on a nice club sandwich for lunch. While you're planning your next bacon meal, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until we can gather here together on the show on Monday, sir? Uh, well, yeah, let's see if uh, if, if uh, the market could actually sell off today. Possible. Um, and if we get like a real, you know, uh, like kind of a little flyer here in VIX, the market gets a little weak. So I'm just I'm looking at that. Uh, see if we retrace that big uh, move in the queues. Uh, right now, it looks like balls kind of catching a bit everywhere. So that's that's what I got my eye on. Um, I really think the only thing holding up the market is Tesla and Apple right now, <laughs> to be quite honest. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, looking here, just quick updates in the markets at the end of the show. And NASDAQ off a little over 1% now. S&P off about two-thirds of a percent. Dow off about a quarter of a percent. So a little bit more to the dark side, but not a huge move. VIX still hanging out right up close to where it was at the start of the show. We were at 2175. It's almost 22, about 2190 right now. So a little bit more ball, a little bit more red on the screen, but not a ton. You're still kind of hanging out. We're close to where we were at the start of the show. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until we gather here together on Monday? Well, I want to see at the 4,500, I'm sorry, the 4,400 level on the S&P watching that. Uh, I think that's uh, another key number. We're looking to see if we can hold that. Um, and then 4,400, and then, of course, the 20 level on the VIX, uh, continuing to watch the 10-year note, and then just everything earnings, everything news, because... Uh, news can trump any of those things, and uh, I think the news is that we're, we're very much in a headline market right now. And the headline, once again, listeners, Uncle Mike hates bacon. But unfortunately, that music means we have to go for now. That's the end of our inaugural bacon cast. Hope to have more coming. Peppered, candied, what's your preference? Smoked, hit us up. Maple, let us know. <laughs> And let's go around the horn. Let's start with that infamous bacon hater, the unclest of Mike's. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to reach out to you directly and tell you how offended they are by your personal bacon stance, where should they go? What should they do? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W. Check out my YouTube channel. Just type in St. Charles Wealth Management. And if you're looking for a financial advisor who works in the option product, uh, feel free to check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. And Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to reach out to you to share their joy of bacon, maybe some screenshots of their favorite bacon products, where should they go? What should they do? 
go to uh, uh, OptionBit.com or better yet, any product we have, you listen to the show called Ted 888301. Tell them you want 10% off and that Andrew, of course, is the most handsome guy in options. So those are all of that's the easiest way to get yourself a 10%. I, I don't Something know why you, nothing. you keep wanting our audience to lie to poor Ted. I don't understand why you persist in this madness, sir. But I, I joke, we used to have listeners who'd send us all kinds of food screenshots. They're just a thing they, they liked. So yeah, send us your bacon thoughts. Uh, hit us up, let us know. Meanwhile, we got to get on out of here. But I mentioned earlier on the show. Coming back in about half an hour with Carly Garner, going to talk about the world of Twifo. I did break it down, give you a little bit of a spoiler. Lean Hogs, number two to the upside, movers and shakers this week. So maybe a little bit of bacon coming on that show as well. Uncle Mikey can't listen. It's going to offend you too much. Otherwise, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Volatility views. And for all you cool cats in the secret club, options oddities back after that. How fun is that, huh? A lot to break down. We're talking about Oatly. We'll talk about that. All kinds of madness. What are the Rock Lobster and I wearing? In our trades right now, what are we doing? All sorts of fun stuff. What unusual activities on our tape? Secret Club is the place to go to check out all of that. And then back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>